the men be men. But I'm like, what does it have to what, what does it have to do with being a man versus being a woman? It's about equal rights. And I hate to say about rights, but equal opportunity because why is it that one gets blessed and the other one doesn't get blessed and you saying don't bless him because he's a man welcome back with another video this is antonio hicks mr escaping the matrix himself uh one of the reactions to this video because this one kind of hit home for me so I, I know my channel did typically deal with a bunch of i've been posting lately about political stuff but i mean i still say politics so it's pg politics technology gaming but it's still about the politics of life as well too so everything not always about elected officials or law is just navigating life and dealing with those particular politics of life no matter what it is i don't care if it's relationship i don't care if it's corporate stuff which is still part of a relationship or it's like interpersonal relationship or your own mental health relationship and how you're dealing with certain things but this video this one right here that we that, that we're gonna be looking at this is some triggering stuff especially if you come from a household with more than one like you got siblings when if it because if it's just you by yourself you only child i hate it I, sometimes you might not have it made but if, it, if you just buy yourself something you do have it made when it comes to a lot of childhood trauma because in this video you're gonna see like the favoritism is being played by parents and that's something i don't necessarily play. i don't not necessarily i don't play with like i don't do favorites because of what i experienced myself growing up and i'm real open about my life and and my and sometimes some things i kind of shy away from talking about but i'm gonna talk about it today because it hit home for me and it's like i said this video is very triggering so when you watch it i'm gonna ask you to be careful because i want to have a conversation about it too in the comment section like how would you feel about it once we go through it together so y'all y'all check this out and then we're gonna come back to it we're gonna talk about it so, what my, what my house is? Oh, I thought this was about me no no but my thing is you always i'm happy for you since trust i, I am happy for you this is, is but my oh, thing is God. why does she always get it Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know y'all was. Doing, I didn't know y'all used that many I thought y'all got along or something. You, you this house paid off. So here you can see this man is upset because his parents or his mom decided to buy his sister a house. And there's a second part to the story, but I mean, it's just it really is what it is. Is because he, the the son, the one that got us talking, decided to leave and go his own do make his own way out in the in the world. As opposed to staying home and paying rent at home, his mom decided he went against the grain. And so, therefore, he wasn't deserving of getting a, a house. And I'm like, why is that okay? Because I'm like, to me, I would think that's what you would want is somebody to get the, their means together, pull themselves up, and, and flee the nest and try to make it on their own. I mean, some of us, I mean, you're going to hit some roadblocks every now and then. But at least try to make your own way. So I'm like, why are you rewarding a person that desired to stay at home? And then you're going to use this gas like him using excuse as, well, because she paid rent. She was, uh, that, the money she paid towards rent actually went towards buying her house. So I'm like, come on now. Like, I'm, I'm like, it takes people 30 years to pay off a mortgage. Unless you are aggressively planning with a 15-year uh, mortgage. But I'm like, you got to be aggressively paying down a mortgage for even a 15-year to pay it off. So I'm like, she wasn't paying that much money to where she turned around and bought her house. I'm like, they bought her that house. And I'm like, you know, this could, this could potentially be a skit, which is coming from out of Atlanta. More than likely, it really is a skit. But still, at the end of the day, that still holds true to actual relationships. And like I was saying early on, a lot of people experience it because if you go through the comment section, you see a lot of people telling their own personal life stories and what they actually went through. And it's like, it's sickening to me because you'll get some that makes some excuse. Like one woman says, in here, y'all are men, be men. But I'm like, what does it have to, what, what does it have to do with being a man versus being a woman? It's about equal rights. And I hate to say about rights, but equal opportunity because why is it that one gets blessed and the other one doesn't get blessed and you saying don't bless him because he's a man? So my thing is, because he's a man and you telling him to be one, well, what happens when something happens to the parents? Do you go and say, I'm going to be a man? I'm like, well, go back to the one that you sat there and you baby and you coddle and you go see if they can get some help and get some help from them. And then one, one guy comes back and then he says, you better take that entitlement behavior and run with it and get your own house. They can do whatever they want to do with their money. You are an adult. I suggest you act like it. Nobody owes you nothing. And I'm like, so what if he does the same attitude towards them? And he says, he's going to say, well, since I'm, in being, since I'm being entitled and because I'm a man, I, I'm deserving of it. Well, then when you need help, 
then you go back and you ask them. And I, I'm not trying to say that, you know, them raising this kid up until he was 18 and taking care of him up to 18 don't get no credit for nothing. But that is the argument that I do make, especially when it comes to anybody's parent. Nobody asked to be here. And I don't care what your belief system is. I don't care where you fall at and say you manifest yourself. And your, I don't care about any of this stuff. Nobody asked to be here. It takes two people to come together and coming together and infusing to make a body, a, a something that a soul can possess and get into. And in that instance, they chose to create that child and bring that child here into, onto this domain. And so in doing so, you have an obligation as a parent to take care of that child until that child can take care of themselves. So I am not asking any, even myself, I am not asking anybody to give me any flowers for doing what I was supposed to do. I will ask for flowers for doing the extra I was doing, but not the, the bare minimum of raising a child and making sure a child is in a safe household and they have the, the means they need to be successful, to graduate high school and to go off into college and do whatever else in life and, and raise them to be functioning adults to think for themselves and not be dependent upon their parents to a degree. So no. And I, and I say that to say that even by myself and even in my own personal life, like my kid, my wife and I got my ex-wife and I got divorced. I think my boys, they were four or five when we got divorced and she went back to her home state which I'm not going to say all that, but she was three states away from me. So y'all can figure out three states up north. I'm in Georgia. Y'all, I mean, y'all. I've said before I'm in Georgia. So in order for me to see my kids, and I didn't have a lot of money back then too when we got a divorce. So in order for me to see my kids, I had to drive to see my kids. I drove to see my kids three to four times a year. I did it. I, I mean, I, it became a habit. I did it. Did I, it. No matter how many, I didn't complain about it. I complain sometimes because I'm like, I'm not, meeting, meet, I'm not being met halfway. But at the end of the day, I love my boys. And I would travel through the hills and the fires. I don't care how, what kind of torrential downpours or what. And I did that too, to get to my boys so I can see them because I love my boys. I genuinely want to have kids and I love them to death. And I don't care how long a distance they were away. I would went to go and see them to make sure they can remember my face. And this was before the age of FaceTime too. So I did all that. And I mean, I paid for extracurricular activities. I mean, I didn't have enough, but I paid, I paid more than my share to uh, make sure that they have all the stuff they had to be successful. And I don't care that my kids play. My kid, I had three rules in my household, and I'm going to get back into the story, but I had three rules in my household. You had to play an instrument, you had to play sports, and you had to have your education. All of those helped to build a strong, to me, functioning adult. To play instruments, it helps work on your creative talents. It helps you to think outside the box, help you with your math skills, your cognitive abilities. To play sports, help you learn how to work with a team, help you out with your leadership abilities. It helps you out to be able to know how to work things when it's hard and help you push on through life no matter what's going on. And then uh, education, I mean, it's just a foundational thing. I mean, it's, the, it's just a building block. I mean, when <laughs> it takes education to be, do anything and everything. And my boys did that successfully. They graduated with honors and they about to graduate college with honors. And I made sure they had all of those things to be successful in life. And I don't play favorites with any of my boys because of what I had to go through. And a lot of people in this conversation, what we all had to go through growing up. And so my parents, they, I mean, I'm going to say they did a terrible job. They raised us. And I, I'm the middle child. So I do suffer from middle child syndrome. And I've only seen one other person in my, in my family, particularly that don't meet that same qualification. He, he's a middle child, but yeah, he don't meet that same qualification as some of the rest of us that have suffered through middle, middle, middle child syndrome. And generally, so when you have an older child, of course, it's trial and error. I mean, it is trial and error when you have that first child because it's your first. You don't know. You don't know what it means to really raise a kid. I mean, you know, what people have told you, but you don't yourself have not experience. You don't have any experience raising a kid. So you give anything and everything to that kid. Then when I came along, of course, I was a baby at the time until I came along. And so I I wasn't a baby long enough to really get spoiled because two years later, my parents end up having my sister. They got pregnant, had my sister. She was a baby baby, and they didn't have any more kids after that. So my brother, he got taken care of, and he caused problems because he was causing problems. They had to do more, give him more attention. And, I mean, he did a whole bunch of stuff that I couldn't even do as far as playing sports and stuff like that. I couldn't even play sports. As much as I want to play sports, I couldn't play sports because my parents were like, well, who going to pick you up? And, you know, both of us got to work, and we're not going to be there. But I was like, but it was okay for him to play sports. And so then my sister, they had her in uh, pageants. 
they had her in like talent shows and stuff. And well, I mean, of course it's cool, but they had her out external stuff on top of it too. They gave her, guys, she got vo- vocal lessons, all that stuff. I didn't get any of those things. I got what would you would call the bare minimum. I got raised. They bought, made sure I had clothes on my back, some trendy clothes I had on my back, and they put food on the table. And that was it. I graduated. Wasn't the greatest in school. I had ADD. They didn't know that. And I didn't know what it was. I mean, nobody knew what it was. They didn't know what it was. And I didn't know what it was until I got into college. And I went to see a therapist. Well, I went to see a doctor. And I was telling them what my issues was. And they told me I had. They diagnosed me with ADD and gave me some medication for it. So then um, I say that to say, so when I got into school, I paid for my own school. I paid for my own car because whenever I went back to my own, my parents, my parents never had it because they were taking care of my brother and him taking care of my sister. They had nothing. And so I moved out on my own, paid my own rent, and I struggled. I mean, I struggled. I wasn't making a lot of money. I struggled, but I paid my own way, and my parents never helped out with nothing. Didn't help out with my boys. My, my brother got married, and he got married to, uh, to in a relationship with somebody that had kids that he didn't, that wasn't his own. And so my parents took on them kids as if they was one of their, their, their grandchildren. Help take care of their kids. Help buy them school clothes, bought them supplies and stuff, got them diapers, got, I mean, got everything for these kids. Everything for these kids, even though the mom was a stay-at-home mom. And they made sure my brother moved back in with them, made sure it's taken care of, and my sister stayed with them. My sister hadn't moved out of the house yet. So you talking about years progressing on, I am out on my own functioning in life. I didn't, I couldn't get a handout for nothing. Nothing at all. All the way up, and y'all know I'm in my 40s. So y'all all the way up until they were in. My sister was in her late 30s before she kind of pissed everybody off and she left. And the same thing with my brother. So now the one, this is what I talk about. The one they did not help out. They would not, they did not babysit my boys. When me and my my kids, ex, my, my ex-wife got a divorce, my boys came in for the summer. I couldn't even get in the bed. Here, y'all are men, be men. But I'm like, what does it have to, what, what does it have to do with being a man versus being a woman? It's about Equal rights, and I hate to say about rights, but equal opportunity. Because why is it that one gets blessed and the other one doesn't get blessed? And you saying don't bless him because he's a man? Nowhere to be found, and it is the same situation across the board. And you have people in here talking about in this comment section that you a man and that you're not entitled to your your parents' money, and they can do what they want to do. And I'm in agreement with that. You can do what you want to do, but not at the expense of causing trauma to the other kid because how right is that where this one kid goes off does his own thing to make his own way the least you could do is reward him with something of equal if you got it i mean if you got the means to it clearly they got the means to do it of equal value if not more rather than spoil the one that's already at home like give this man a house or just go have meet him down the middle and say, okay, I got this down payment for your house and I got this down payment for your house. Now you, the other one that's staying home since you're working, y'all clearly where she's working. Uh, you got to make, you find a house where you can pay your mortgage and you got to find a way of find a house where you can pay your own mortgage. You already paying rent now. Just find a way if you, it's going to be more to pay your own mortgage. To me, that would have been fair, but to give a house to one and then you don't give it to the other, and your excuse is because you left home? That's BS to me. And again, this could be a skit. It could be a skit, but it is the truth. It really is the truth. So I'm just always like, I don't I don't understand why, why people would do that. Because I understand that you may have one kid that, you know, just pisses you off. And I'm like, I will understand if they were doing something like that. But if, I mean, if they weren't doing something to cause it, because I love my boys unconditionally. That's why I say, if, if they aren't doing anything to harm themselves or harm anybody else, if as long as they're making their way, I mean, you need this needs to be fair and balanced. My boys, long as again, long as my boys aren't doing anything that's going to cause any physical harm to anybody else or cause any harm to themselves, it, I love my boys unconditionally. I might not agree with certain things that they do, but they will never deter or take away from my love for them. So when it comes to rewards and stuff, like I, my boys get equal stuff right now. I pay, only difference is, <laughs> there's a difference, but they still get equal things. So I pay for one's, uh, his apartment because he didn't couldn't get housing on campus, but I pay for his apartment and his his um, utilities and everything else when it, while he's in school. But I still send money up for the both, both of them of the same value. Now one gets, I guess you could say a little bit more, but that's not, 
a default of the this not the fault of his, but just because they couldn't we couldn't find housing at the school for him to stay into. So we had to get an apartment and I got the I had to get the apartment for him. But they still get they still get equal stuff. And I try to make sure because my youngest is he's in the same state as me. Uh, he generally gets more because whenever we're going out and buying like dinner and stuff like that, he's always eating the best of the best. And that's one thing I did pride my I, I made sure I pride myself on is I didn't pride myself, but just make sure that they had and when they went off to school that their lifestyle wouldn't be any different in school than what it was near at home. So whatever you eating at home, I'm gonna make sure that you eating that same thing when you off in college. Now when they graduate, no, nah, that money, that money coming back home. But as when I, as far as like treating them equally, they get treated equally. Again, they, my boys get treated equally. So y'all, let, let, let's talk about it coming. So how do y'all feel about that? Like, how do y'all feel about that? Do you think one kid should get more than the other one if they're not listening to you on certain topics? Because like I said, my only my only thing is, my only caveat is, as long as you are harming yourself, I said this before, as long as you are harming yourself or harming anybody else, to me, it's it's got to be fair and it's got to be balanced. I, that's how I feel because I don't want one feeling slighted over the other one. It's got to be fair. It's got to be balanced. So what do y'all think? Let's, let's, what do y'all think? Let's talk about it. How do you feel? What would you do in this situation? Are you in agreement? Are you in disagreement? Do you think the parents have the right to do what the hell they want to do, regardless of your own personal feelings? And if they want to give a car to one person and don't want to give it to another, I mean, what do you think about that? So hope y'all having a good week. Thank y'all for tuning in this episode. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Make sure, again, let's leave a comment down below. Turn on your notifications. And again, if y'all are looking to get a podcast going or get anything started with content creation, I do have a book out on my website, ptgtv.online. It's ptgtv.online. And the book is The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. It is available now on my website. And once you go through the book, you can schedule a one-on-one conversation with me and I will help you out. I don't care if it's audio, video, editing and stuff. I don't care if it's about how to get your stuff published online. You can schedule a one-on-one with me free of charge to you. So go check it out on my website, ptgtv.online, the ultimate technical guide to creating a podcast. So thank y'all for tuning in this episode. Let's talk about it down in the comments. Love you all until the next time. Matrix out.